Hey Hydrogen Room page fans! In this video you will see how to design and manufacture powerful hydrogen booster for any internal combustion engine, considering that the whole world is closed for quarantine and now I had to work in the underground cave. It looks like the whole world locked to quarantine and it was almost impossible to move around the city. The good news, the repair of my lab, which lasted half a year, is finally over. The bad news, it was immediately locked without access right even for stuff. Ok, situation. I need to figure out how to continue working on the reactor, given that all technical stores and markets are closed. Uh, I have no lab anymore and moving around the city seems to be better at night. So I had to pick up all my stuff and evacuate my lab to an underground bunker, which was supposed to be a place of self-isolation, work and life indefinitely. I would love to start working right now, despite it's freaking cold here, <laughs> and now I am get warm with a metal sheet hit it by a propane burner. But there is still no table, furniture and nothing at all, so it's better to me to start doing something, otherwise I'll just freeze to death here. Good news! I made a table for myself. And now I have a workplace again. And now I had a heater, so now it's heat, plus 4 degrees centigrade. So I can finally take up the reactor. Ok, let's remind what I want to do and calculate some parameters of the new electrolyzer. Electrolyzer is a simple device that turns water into fuel with the help of electric current. So we get gas with combustion temperature over 2000 degrees centigrade and the energy density second only to enriched uranium. My idea is simple, install such a device right next to the engine and deliver HHO gas under decent pressure directly to the combustion chamber. Air-fuel mixture enriched with high energy density gas. What does this mean in simple English? I want to force the engine without dissembling anything and without making any changes to the machine. Sell it on Amazon as slightly used after it. Ok, what power do we need to squeeze out from the new electrolyzer? If my math is right, and sometimes it really is, that is for a notable acceleration of a pit bike with a 4-stroke engine of 140 cubic centimeters, given its power, engine speed range, volumetric efficiency of motor, rate of consumed air, gasoline and brown gas, the operation of the electrolyzer in constant and pulse modes, we need a gas generation rate of at least 3 liters per minute and maximum pressure of 5 atmospheres. So, it's better to return the plates to round shape like in an Ironman cell, then the reactor will withstand more pressure due to its uniform distribution on the walls. Now we need to estimate the active area of the plates. My 150 watt cell operating normally without overheating gives 1 liter of hydroxy per minute with a total active area of 1 tenth of square meter. So we can accept that for 1 kilowatt of power consumption we need 1 square meter of active area. If we need 3 liters per minute, the active area of all plates is 3 times larger, it's 3 tenths of square meter. The next question is how many plates are needed and how to connect them. It depends on the voltage of the power source. If we connect the reactor to the onboard battery, this is 12 volts. If we use lithium batteries, then the most affordable ready-made assemblies, which are used in electric vehicles such as scooters and gyroscooters, this is 36 volts. To start electrolysis process you need to fill in the water between two metal plates and simply apply a voltage of 2 volts to them. So if we connect the cells in series and power it by 12 volts battery, we need 7 plates, which form 6 cells. But if we make 3 assemblies of 7 plates and connect them as you can see in the picture, then the reactor will power perfectly from 12 volts and 36 volts. Ok, let's sum up all this stuff. We need to get the parts for 19 layer sandwich so that it gives 3 liters per minute and we stand 5 atmospheres. That's the words I say to cops if they stop me on my way. The good news, I ordered the most complex parts of the reactor, stainless steel metal plates, just before the whole world decided to play Zombieland and the remaining parts I have to find old fashioned way а это значит снова свалки. И 
You will be amazed at how many useful things can be found on the scrapyards in Russia after the dusk of Soviet Union era. Screws, nuts and washers, Soviet electronic boards with parts and textile aid, high-pressure horses, gaskets, tanks, spark plugs, wires and even a little stainless steel. Before I started manufacturing, I analyzed all the pros and cons of my previous cells, so sit back and relax and enjoy the upgrades of a new model. The cell body is not from plexiglass anymore, but from 5mm stainless steel to withstand high pressure. In fact, the body plates are participating in the decomposition of water and form 1st and 19th plates. The upper gas vent holes in the plates are not the circle holes anymore, but elongated slots with an area calculated for a definite gas generation rate. The bottom holes for the water circulation are in chest order, on even plates on the right, on odd ones in the left. This prevents the leakage of electrons through the water and the voltage drop across each cell. And this increases efficiency. When I tested Mark 1 for maximum pressure, the gas leakage occurred due to gas being pushed out by rubber gaskets. To prevent this from happening in this reactor, I decided to fill the cell with epoxy. The reactor will turn out not separable, but the discs will definitely not pop out. A tank for water and gas supply and foam separation also made from a thick walled stainless steel. The holes in the tank are designed so it can be mounted horizontally and vertically and the gas output fitting will not be filled with water. As you can see, this reactor combined the best properties of all previous models. Mad engineers who want to do it themselves, please wait for the PDF instruction, there are a lot of technical details, the correct sequence of all operations is also very important. I developed every part by myself, but I could assemble it only after 4 attempts. The last time I even had to completely cut and split the reactor because of one stupid mistake, so don't make it without PDF guide. In a perfect world, in my system, in addition to the cell and the water tank, there also must be a bubbler, a separate cylinder of gas accumulation, a reactor control unit and preferably pressure and temperature sensors. But I won't make it all right now, because I can't get all the necessary components due to quarantine. So the functions of the bubbler and the high-pressure cylinder will be taken over by the water tank and the entire circuit will be controlled with only two buttons and uh, a Jedi Force, I think. Honestly, I just can't wait to test the new reactor. We can do this now. So now let's think as if the Wizard of Oz gave me some brain. I calculated all parameters except one. I had no ideas about the rate of hydrogen pressure rising. It turned out that it's 6 atmospheres per minute, so the most part of the explosive gas just didn't have time to get into the carburetor, mixed with gasoline vapors and made me Freddy Krueger. I will definitely add a manometer to the circuit and I will do everything properly as soon as I change my pants.
Okay, achievement. Now I can force any internal combustion engine, whether it be a motorcycle, a car or a tank, making no changes to the engine itself. The reactor works well in two modes. The first mode, when the gas enters the engine continuously, gives a power increase of about 4%, fuel saving of 5-6% and cleans the engine from carbon deposits. The second and most fun post mode is fast and furious, when gas is supplied sharply and under high pressure and gives instant acceleration in any gear at any engine speed. Fortunately, the engine still haven't melted and stick and the piston didn't flew into my head as I was promised, of course a bunch of ideas of upgrade. The gas generator will work even better if we assemble the entire circuit but not a half, the main thing is we needed a separate tank for gas storage. The tube from tank to carburetor needs to be taken with a larger diameter so that the gas can quickly entice the combustion chamber. Another solenoid valve is needed also. But it doesn't matter, the main thing, everything works! I will continue to torture the speed bike in the following videos, but most importantly I will make detailed technical videos on the manufacture of the entire system and its installation, so subscribe to Alex Lab channel not to miss most interesting. Who wanna make this stuff themselves, drawings, step-by-step -step PDF instructions, a complete list of components and tools in English are available to Alex Lab channel sponsors. You want to develop cool devices together? Join the team of my engineers. Write all technical questions in the comments below. Bye.